Yo, yo, how's it going? Welcome to season 22 of Muscle. Forgive me if I sound a bit tired. This is actually the second time I'm recording this because the first time I did not realize that my mic was not plugged in. So um, my voice felt like it was really, really far away. But I've done a few tests and it should be uh, perfect now. Anyway, so yeah, I've already made a video kind of showing, you know, seven to eight hours of footage of, you know, my climb from Diamond 5 to Master. And then as I explained in the video, unfortunately, I didn't get all the footage because I didn't realize I ran out of storage and, you know, so on, so on. But look, I, what I wanted to do is just kind of walk through the deck list that I used to go through. Um, unfortunately, well, I would say unfortunately, but last time I feel like maybe the edits weren't as appreciated. I, I feel like maybe people don't care to see the edits so much. Um, and if they do, they can speak up and say um, otherwise. And, and I'll happily make the effort because um, I, I do enjoy it. I just don't want to waste people's time. So I'm going to just jump into this as quickly as possible. So first things first. You can see the whole deck list here. It looks um, like a real mess, I'm not gonna lie. I, I can see a lot of one-off cards in here and I can totally understand why someone would think this is super bricky and messy, but it has worked so well for me. So out of the last 20 games I've had, um, I stopped playing after I made um, Master One, but after la from the last 20, I won 14 and a lot of them were five in a row, six in a row. So I was quite pleased. Um, obviously this is a best of one game. So yeah, luck is a huge factor and I was probably very lucky, but Considering how I started the season, I'm very um, pleased to have a little bit of luck on my side. So, yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to jump into how I split it up just to kind of make it a bit more efficient and easy for me to explain. So, in fact, I don't really need to click edit every time. So, as you can see here, main engine is MathMec. I don't have a lot of cards for MathMec, as you can see, and um, it might seem a bit unusual. A lot of people play mainly MathMec. They play two copies of Addition Subtraction, maybe two copies of Sigma, and maybe two copies of, or maybe even three copies of diameter and sometimes they don't include either of these two so and that's completely up to you it does help with consistency for getting the mathmec line however i do feel like the mathmec line is quite weak without the code talker support like the sinic conflict which is my favorite um it's my favorite card of this deck to be honest which um, sounds pretty sad because it's a counter trap but it's just so good it really is satisfying to kind of have a card that cannot be responded to unless it's a counter trap itself and i have had red reboot happen to me a few times but in my opinion, it's worth the gamble. But look, there's not many cards here. Three circular standard. You you really, really want this card in your hand. One diameter. You can play two. It is really, um, it's a very important card, to be honest, um, in this deck list, just because you need that negate, and it is also an extender on its own, so very good. Never play more than one of this card. This card in my hand, I really do consider a brick, but thanks to cards like Sinet Codec, it still helps me create a consistent end board, but I can touch on that in a little bit. And then I only play one of these two, one of each um, of these guys, just because, I don't know, I feel like having two, they are decent extenders, but if you already have other cards and you have two of these in hand of, you know, the respective ones, you can't use the ability more than once. So I didn't really care for it. Now, Nabla, Nabla, I was not originally playing. I um, tried to play without it, but in the cases where you create Alan Bershon and you need, and you search for Circular, it's really good to send this one to the graveyard for cost have Alan Bershon tribute itself to bring Nabla out and then, you know, get super factorial and then use Nabla to get diameter. And then in some cases, it's not even bad to open with Nabla because let's say you have Mathmic Circular, you can send um, Sigma to Graveyard as cost, have Mathmic Circular out, bring Nabla on board and then just tribute itself to get diameter. So now that when you search for your super factorial, you have a negate on board and it really does help to ha kind of ha um, have that. And if you have the extenders, you can just keep Alan Bershon on board in case he has Nibiru and then try and get that Transcode Talker co-linked with Heat Soul. So I think this is like a, a decent, you know, spread between the um, you know the number of cards here. But yeah, Sigma, again, you can play this as two as well. It is, this card has come in so, so clutch so many times. If your opponent manages to out your extra um, linked monsters, extra linked, any, sorry, any monster you have in the extra monster zone, basically is what I'm saying. If they out it, um, this card is great because you can just bring it back and it's an extra body for free, you know, because once per turn. But just bear in mind, it does banish itself. So you can only use that engine once. So that's unfortunate. But what I'm going to do is, so I won't go, there we go. So I'll try and keep it here. That way it's a bit easier. And I'll just go through them very briefly. So Dotscaper, this card is great for extending your play. And sometimes it's just, well, you're just extending your play because if you normal summon it and bring out Lingaribo or Almirage, it just brings itself back. So you've got an extra body, but... Mainly you're going to be using it to send from co-generator by extending your play. You, you know, use this card from hand to link summon a co-talker monster. 
send this to the graveyard, brings itself back, and your your play continues really from there. And I can talk through a particular play that I love, um, my favorite play of the season, really. So, and I'll, I'll talk on it in a moment. But Microcoder, that card is just to get Sign at Conflict. Again, it's such a great benefit that it can link summon from hand. So it is really nice when you can search for it, and then you don't have to worry about it being in your graveyard. But that's why we have um, Exceed here as a contingency, as well as putting Terra Hurts on your starting end board. Uh, Debug, this card, I'm really glad I put it in just because it's really good to have a card that can search for any one of these when you need it, particularly Microcoda at the beginning when you're trying to secure that combo. And then with Parallel Exceed, so I understand why people play it at three. I used to play it at three myself, but I just wanted to kind of switch things up and try it with two, and I've not really experienced a brick yet. If you have two in hand, I know why the third is great because, well, it's in your deck and you can you know special summon it, but... I've not really run into that issue, and it, again, this is a game that is like a best of one luck scenario. So if it happens to you, then well, it is what it is. Like what, what, what can you say really? And um, yeah, it's just really good to have it like that. Gachiri, this card is it's more of a contingency. So I play a card, um, Sinet Codec, like I mentioned earlier. Um, that basically, when you create your Code Talker monster, particularly in this scenario because it's an Earth monster, if you make Transcode uh, Talker, Deco Talker, whatever you can bring this card to your hand. And this card is really easy to just summon itself. And the added effect of targeting one face that wants to do control and it is unaffected by your opponent's card. So all card effects until the end of your opponent's turn. So I find that really good. Now the Kaiju, I just put it as support and an extender because I wasn't sure where else to put it. This card is just great for outing, you know, the big tower boss monsters. I'm pretty sure everyone's familiar what Kaijus are about. And it's also a great bridge for um, small world when you're trying to get into your uh, Mathmic mainline if you, if you don't need it. But... This card never really came up much for me. I think I used it once and it was a really calculated decision because once you use it, you can't really go into the transcode talker plays unless you have those um, you know, natural extenders on board. But I just try to not use this card as much as possible just because it does kind of lock you out and it's unfortunate really that way. Um, yep, so that's the support. Now with the hand traps, sorry, I had to cough there. So with the hand traps, stuff like Droll and Lockbird, I was playing three, but now that everyone uses them, I don't really feel the need to like always have this in hand. It's only really against purely in a few combo decks that this card works. But everyone is so prepared for it now that if they have cross out, then yeah, or call by the grave, it, well, it is what it is. So yeah, uh, I just play two of them just to kind of cut down the deck to 40 cards if possible. Uh, Standard staple, maxi, ash blossom, don't really need to explain those two. As well as impermanence, this is a um, pretty standard staple. Uh, you could play three. I was playing three at one point, but I don't really care to have this card in my hand as a hand trap. Um, I care more for like Droll and, and Maxi, if I'm being honest, as well as Red Reboot. I think I would much prefer to have this over most of these cards just because this card really stops. It's just great for your OTK line because if they activate anything, you stop any traps now. And they're, they're most often the Gates or Dogmatica, which is just a, a board clearer for me, and it's so annoying. But yeah, you play two. I play two impermanence uh, minimum because if you open with cross out designator and an impermanence, and you, if you only had one, you can't use that cross out on an impermanence used against you because you don't have anything from the deck to banish. So just good to play those. Try making. I'm just trying to make good time here so I'm not using up. Um, yeah, just not wasting too much of your time really. So uh, sign it. Comp, uh, sign it mining. Sorry. Great card. I play two just because I have opened with three before and I even consider two a brick. So to open with three is just very, very shitty in my eyes. So I just tried to cut it down so I could keep my deck list at 40. Small world, very standard. If you have the right bridges, you can get any card in your deck and it really... So sometimes I will search for um, Ash if my opponent hasn't tried to maxi um, straight away in like the standby phase. And a lot of people scoop because now they realize, oh, I should have just maxied straight away and i guess that's a, le uh, a lesson to you so a lesson to like uh most people anyway so yeah I, I i would search for ash and then yeah my i can go for my combo plays for free now i'm going to go into sign out credit last because i'll be honest this season this card has been my favorite i was so underrated i think and maybe people who are aware of it well i feel like if you're aware of it, then you should use it it's honestly incredible and i'll explain the combo um combo line in a minute so with forbidden chalice it is most definitely not better than impermanence but the one thing about impermanence that is very very unfortunate is that you cannot play it from hand if you have something on your board whether it's face up or face down this card cannot be played from your hand so having a card like forbidden chalice which is a quick play spell really is beneficial because now i can 
make a what do you call it make a play around the idea of I don't know some form of negate whether it's uh, Baron de Fleur or something I can bait out basically I can bait out on the gate so I can use math make circular from hand they try to negate it with Baron which would destroy it then I use forbidden chalice he can't negate it because he's already using his one negate on the field well whatever not the greatest scenario to describe but there's thousands where this card has definitely come in clutch for me so I've really appreciated it now call by the grave I don't really need to explain this it's just to kind of stop hand traps uh, any of the monster hand traps anyway particularly stuff like dimension shifter and anything that gets sent to the graveyard that has a particular effect that you want to stop I tried to use it a lot on um, labyrinth that clockwork card the labyrinth clockwork card that that card is so irritating because it just allows them to have an activatable trap card that they can choose if they have the the new labyrinth uh, boss monster I forgot the name of it because uh, I, I just don't play that deck but yeah, really, um, this card came in clutch a few times. Cross that designator. I try to play as much, um, as many hand traps as possible. This card is amazing in the matchup against Mathmic because you can just negate whatever card you think is going to be impactful for them because you're most likely to use it yourself. I've seen someone use it against me on Small World and that was um, really shocking to me and I, I did lose that game. So yeah, just great for the matchup and any other hand trap. I don't play Effect Veiler. Don't really think it's that valuable. Um, and also with Nibiru, I was playing Nibiru at the start. You might see that in the replays video, but I just stopped playing it. I didn't see it that much. Like when I did see it, yeah, I was very likely I'm um, going to lose. I think I, it was very rare that I won, but the fact that I rarely saw it, it kind of made me think, why am I preparing for a scenario where I require this one card in my hand to make it work? And I only play one diameter, so to create that negate, it just requires a lot of setup and... I just personally don't think it's worth it. So you just play with a chance. It's the best of one. If you lose, you lose, and it is what it is, you know. Uh, but yeah, impermanence, I already explained that. Super factorial, don't need to explain this. This is just the Mathmic card. Um, just time it as best as you can. Try and make sure they put on put cards on board that you can remove. That way, you're actually disrupting their plays. Red Reboot, explained as a hand drop, and of course, Sinet Conflict, my favorite card of this deck. But I have to say this season this card has definitely been my favorite i'm i keep recrafting it because i really want to get it in royal just i've i've loved it so to explain the play that i was talking about earlier now if i go on related cards uh tell you what, not really relevant so the play that i would uh, describe is sometimes i open with lady debug and another mathmet card that requires a normal summon and it really really puts me in a tough scenario so for example if i have diameter in hand and lady uh, debug but I also have Sinet Codec in hand. I can create my end board with Sinet Conflict and the Super Factorial without like any stress whatsoever. So really puts me in a good spot. So I can explain now. So you normal summon debug, Lady Debug. You grab Code Generator from your hand. Now I'll tell you what, just as a visual thing, because I will do a separate video on this, but just to make it easier. Now you have Lady Debug on board. You search for Code Generator. You use Lady Debug and Code Generator to make Code Talker here, the dark version with this already played on with this already on the board because that's the whole point of the ability now that i've made a dark monster that's a code talker i can now bring microcoder to hand and then because i sent dotscaper from code generators effect to the graveyard it resummons itself so now i use microcoder and dotscaper to make code talker inverted and because i have diameter in hand this card's ability is to special summon any cyburst monster from my hand so it could be whatever level but in this particular case we want it to be a level four and because it's diameter, it's even better than, um, as you can see. So di so now I have Code Talker, Code Talker inverted on board and diameter. I use these two to go into Splash Mage, bring back the Lady Debug. So now I have two level fours to go into Alan Bershon. And then even better, I have a negate from diameter from that. So now I'm more than guaranteed to go into the rest of my plays. And because I use Microcoder to make Code Talker inverted, I'm getting that Sinet Conflict. So I've already confirmed one side of my end board is, is already in line. Of course, if they ash it, then, you know, that's that's part of the game, you know, interruptions. But that, I'm just explaining the play that you can still make with two normal summon guards that usually would be a brick. But because of this card, yeah, saves the day. So, yep, go Splash Mage, bring back the debug, go into Alan Bershin, search for Circular, send... Hmm. I would send Nabla, if anything. I wouldn't send... Um, Actually, you could send Sigma because you're not really going to use it to summon itself. You're going to use Alan Bershin to tribute itself. So yeah, okay. You would use Alan Bershin to tribute itself, bring back the Sigma so it's on board with Circular, 
search the super factorial, and now you have all the mathematic monsters you need as well as Sinic Conflict. And then now all you have to do is build Transcode Talker co-linked with Decode Heat Soul. And the best part, and people always forget this, now that you're building with this card, you will now get an Earth Monster. So you can get Kachiri if you want, or you can get another code generator, but that's more for a going second play. And then when you go for Decode uh, Heat Soul, you can get Subtraction or Addition. So you can still go into your terahertz play at the beginning, and it's incredible, like how this card is. It was really underrated. I, I didn't expect to see this um, like perform so well for me. It's just because someone I played against as a mathematic player beat me, and I looked at their deck list, and they played this, and I was like, "How does this help in any way?" Tried it, and yeah, I was, I was really, really surprised. So yeah, it's done really well for me. So I've rambled on a bit there. I've tried to keep that as short as possible, and then um, the last thing is the extra deck. Oh, I promise I'll keep this super, super brief, just to make things easy. So I play one Laplacian and one Alan Burchin. You can play more of these two because I get that they are the kind of main interruptions for uh, Mathmic. Well, one's a searcher, one's an interruption. A lot of people like to summon Laplacian first turn and, you know, rip a card from your opponent's hand. But if you get into B-Rude, this is probably the worst time to get into B-Rude. So you have to be very careful with that. And you don't really get to get the, you know, the end board. You, you mainly end up on Heat Soul only, and this card is very easily outable. So I personally wouldn't go for that, but yeah, that's, well, as you can see, I don't go for that. So yeah, I go one of each. Aggregator, great to have off um, Firewood um, Terahertz. I don't know why I'm trying to say the whole name. So yeah, great for Terahertz. This basically turns any hand trap into a starting card for your combo, which is amazing because it's Cyburst and only requires a less than a thousand attack, which is, you know, all of them, including Maxi. Linger Rebo, great for um, the trap decks, really. If you can get this card on board on your first turn so how i would do it is have if you can get terahertz and heat soul without using your extenders you can use terahertz to send dotscaper it resummons itself and now you can just make lingaribo so if your opponent has labyrinth and they try to do that end phase thing on your turn where they send labyrinth clockwork and the other i don't know whatever cards they are and set up um one of the labyrinth trap cards even if they trigger it you've got lingaribo to banish it so it's not coming back it's not going to be able to create that um was it that targeting effect where it bounces back a monster it's it's gone it's in the it's in the banish bar so yeah i if you can get this on board if not great extender anyway already explained these two code talker monsters the reason i have this the code talker is because it's a link free sometimes you want to stay in the higher link numbers that way you can get into stuff like access code a lot easier so for example if i have if i'm going second and i have sign uh, codec on the board and I create Decode Talker with whatever materials. One, it's a link three. And two, because I played two microcoders, I can search for this, bring its hand, and use the two of them to make Access Code Talker. And that way I've got my link four. Because in the scenario where you can only make one of these, you don't really have any other link three um, cards except for these two. And primarily, you're going to try and summon both of these on your first turn. So it, this is a very good contingency, contingency card, and it has come up a few times. So, but. Again, like I said, feel free to change out anything in this deck list. Yeah, don't change this out there. You need this and this and this. And this is optional, but personally, I prefer this to um, access code in um, a lot of scenarios. If your opponent has an attack position monster on board with 3,000 or less attack, if you haven't already used multiplication uh, and you can send it to grave as cost, you, if you can mill it basically to go for game, this card is the best OTK line. But of course, um, look, nothing really beats access code nothing can respond to it so it is a great card to yeah it's just a it's probably the best end board clearer there is but if it's a defense position monster you need to clear the whole board before you do anything so it does kind of suck and um, even if it is an attack monster you're not getting enough attack to beat through it you have to clear the board and unfortunately in some situations you just don't have enough extenders and then uh yeah update jam i don't need to explain it some people play uh two splash mage feel free to do so but I wouldn't change this um, for anything for me. This really, really worked well for me. And um, just trying to think if there's any points. I think that's the main thing, really. Um, it just play it by ear about what experiences you go through. This deck really worked well for me, and I really wouldn't change anything about it. Except, please bear in mind that this is before Arise Heart. Now, Arise Heart, if you don't know, it's... Um, what's the name for it? I guess, Condition Effect. So, whenever it's face up... Any card that goes to the graveyard is now banished, and that kills Mathmate. That's why cards like Dimension Shifter really kill this deck. So imagine having a monster that just is so easily summonable as well. They special summon Fenrir or any of the other Kashtir monsters. 
summon a rise heart to use that card as material and now you've literally just got dimension shifter on board so if you're going second against um cards uh if you're going to second against cash Tira going forward from the from today actually later today it's going to be released you really need to have cards like book of eclipse take what i better get out yeah so i was actually playing this at the beginning of the season um just because it really helps against purely when they set up that trap if you activate this in response to the trap being activated they can't go into noir so it does really help the unfortunate thing is though this thing does get negated by ash because there's like a drawing effect um and that is really shit i'm not gonna lie to you that is really really shit and it has happened to me twice so i do remember it pretty unfortunately and um yeah it's pretty shit you can use um book of moon but i'd say the the pluses of eclipse are that one it's non-targeting so cards that can't be targeted are affected by this unless they're link monsters obviously and then on the other hand it also affects more than one monster uh, book of moon is just one monster it's mainly I, i'd say book of moon is better for your cards when you're trying to resolve an effect but with the particular case of math mech you never really want your card to be face down because we do a lot of link summoning and xz summoning so we need those cards to be faced up unless you've got alan burton on board ready to um was it ready to tribute the monster then i personally would not use this card on your own monster but those are just sort of like you know penny for thoughts kind of cards i would definitely um, implement this because when it comes to cash Terra, it's never just a rise heart that you're worried about it's fenrir unicorn and shangri-la Shang shangri whatever the name is when they have all the cards on board this card can literally destroy the whole board just by putting them all face down and now that shangri-la doesn't have that um destruction effect where if you try to destroy it by battle or you know card effect it can just detach the material no that thing just goes straight away if it's face down so it loses that active condition but look i've rambled on so long here again <laughs> my deepest apologies i've tried to keep it as short as possible if you have any questions please just shoot them below and um i'll be doing a combo video soon a very very short one i'll keep it under five minutes just to kind of showcase how great this card is it's amazing going first because it secures your combo line but it's even better going second because the trouble with having you know link monsters is you need more and more materials and we don't play cards like pot of desires or pot of extravagance or all that other shit we don't play those type of cards to you know add more cards to our deck but this card in particular because you just have so many different code talkers with different you know attributes you can just keep collecting cards to your hand and then just keep extending your plays and the idea is in my opinion and i've done this uh, a few times now you can create access code through you know the extenders you get from this clear the board and then go into terahertz and then just shoot for game because you can negate any monster effect um, going from there but yeah look i've run on enough um if you have any questions or even better, if you have any suggestions for me if you feel like i can add anything better i'm more than happy to listen through but i hope you enjoy the video and yeah see you guys soon take care